terracotta with the same writing. That means this writing existed once worldwide and that means there must have been a global civilization older than Sanskrit, older than 6,000 years. And Professor Schildmann also told me that this writing has a little similarity to the Indus writing and also to the Easter Island writing. And as he said, this is older than Sanskrit. He called this writing pre-Sanskrit. On this stone, you can see on the top the two eyes, and then you see the right hand holding the pyramid and putting the left hand on top of the pyramid. That means showing how to use this pyramid with the eye. On this stone you can see an encarving sitting a man on a stone holding the pyramid exactly as it was shown on the artifact before. From his eyes are going rays out and on the right side you see two bowed persons. On his head he has something like a small helmet and from this helmet goes up like an antenna to a strange object over him. And here you have the photo of the discovered helmet. We could not yet make a metal research or checking what kind of metal was used, but you can see in the center of the helmet that something is missing and that might have been this kind of antenna which was shown on the artifact before. Another very strange finding from the same place is one big jade cup and 12 little jade cups. As the 12 cups are man-made and each one is a little bit different in size, if you fill them up perfectly with water and you put the 12 cups of water inside the big cup, the big cup is completely filled. The next strange thing is that you can see on the little cups numbers which are looking like the Mayan numbers but if you compare them with the Mayan numbers you find out that there are some little differences. And on the big cup you can see a perfect inlaid star constellation also showing the Orion and other stars. And inside the big cup it is very, very magnetic, and outside the cup, nearly nothing. Professional geologists are saying this is impossible because if a stone has metal particles inside the stone, it must be same magnetic from both sides. Here you have a close-up of the big cup, and you can see a perfect inlay of star constellations and they are shining very brightly if you put black light on it. Here you have some small cups that you can figure out more clearly the style of the numbers inlaid in a strange material also shining under black light. That's another piece, a jade plate with the same star constellation inlay like on the big cup and two persons facing the sky and on the next picture you can see that also the eyes of these two statues and the star constellation is shining very strongly under black light. This was once a hard formed brown stone changing the color in the center of the stone into black which usually in nature does not happen and you can see if you look very close you can see a face with closed eyes, with a mouth, the nose, a long beard and long hair. On the left side, the face and also the stone is broken. This is the reverse side of this stone. You can see a spiral and a triangle. The center of the triangle is very magnetic, also shining under black light. Here we have the back side of a cobra. The cobra never existed in South America but this one was found at the same place. On this side of the cobra head you have 
33 lines in lines. So 33 is also a very mystical number since long, long time. And on the left side and right side, you have seven points inlaid. And maybe these are the chakras. Also, this cobra head is shining brightly if you put black light on it. Another object here, you have a perfect worked dolphin head. And also this artifact is shining under black light. Here you have a kind of stone helmet. You can put this granite stone helmet on your shoulders or you can lay your head inside it. And the inlay points which you see on this helmet, some experts told me that these points are exactly the acupuncture points on the human head. Here you can see how it might have been used. And a few months ago, they found at the same place an unfinished stone helmet. So that means that also some of these artifacts were made directly in Ecuador, but many, many years ago. And also the inlay on this object are shining under black light very bright. This is a fantastic jade snake and also the inlay points are shining under black light. Here we have one artifact which is very perfectly carved on the back side. So that means it might have been used to put this artifact on the front of your forehead. You can see the two eyes inlaid. And on the reverse side, you have the so-called third eye. Maybe this artifact was used for some ceremonies or for meditation. Here we have a jade plate with an inlay of a spiral, also shining brightly under black light. Another one, you can see seven rings inlaid in the jade plate and also shining under black light. Maybe this also could be a presentation of the seven chakras. Here is one of the ceramics found there. It's a great masterpiece and the question is how can you make this artifact out of one piece of ceramic? Here we have another pyramidal stone found also in Ecuador. On top you see the pyramid with the eye and you have down several spirals and symbols. Some of them are very similar to the church word Nakal plates, which he found 1880 in India, and the translation was talking about the sunken continent of Mu. This is a marble with another inlay of a spiral also shining very brightly under black light. Another stone in a pyramidal form with an inlay of an eye. Here you can see again the pyramid with the eye and on the bottom you see the Orion star constellation, the three Orion stars, which might focus us to the three pyramids in Egypt. Here you have a ceramic statue you can see the style of sitting is not real pre-Columbian style. It looks like the lotus seat from Asia. On top of this statue, you have a head with some points, and it looks quite similar to many of the Buddha presentations. He holds a snake in his mouth. The snake is a very, very mystical and very